Hello everyone, Kerry the Crafter here, that's C-E-R-I, The Crafter, and I'm here with another page of my art journal. Now, before we start, I must admit I was going to do this yesterday, however, I just wasn't in the mood. I wanted to create something, I felt a bit directionless, so I shut the craft room door and went out for a walk and enjoyed some sunshine. I think that's a healthy attitude because today I've come into the craft room and I'm feeling so much better and my walk yesterday actually rewarded me with something else. So let's have a quick talk about this. Um, you've seen this art journal before. It's the one I create my pieces in. Um, my pages normally look like this and all I do is I put some gesso on them. I put a layer of white gesso on this and then I put clear gesso on the top of it. I don't know why I put clear gesso on the top. I just did did for some reason. Um, I didn't really know what I wanted to create today. So yesterday when I was going through things, I thought I haven't played with rice paper for a while. So I pulled these three rice papers out. As you can see, they're all by Stamperia. I don't expect to use both of these, but one of them almost definitely. Um, I pulled out some rubber stamps. I've got this relatively new rubber stamp for me anyway. Um, as you can see, I cut it in half. Hopefully you can see it. I've got the camera up a little bit higher to give you a full shot. I am a little worried though about smacking my head on the camera, so um, on the iPad, so let's watch out for that. Um, so I've got a stamp pad, got some paints, got some washies, and then what I found yesterday, I went into a shop here in Britain called Works, and they had these paper butterflies, or butterfly decorations as they call them. They had three colours there, and they're £1.50 each. Um, and I thought I'd really like that. I haven't even opened these, so let's let's open these as we see them. Um, they do have a website, the works, um, theworks.co.uk. So I know you can order online. Um, I just went in and found these, and what attracted me was they had large butterflies, and I quite like these. They're they're not hugely robust. They're not really thick, but they're great for what I'm thinking of using them for. So I don't know what color I'm going to use, but I thought they were a nice find. And at £1.50 each, I went, you know what? I don't even know how many is in here. I just didn't even realise. It doesn't tell you how many, but there seems to be quite a lot in this pack. And I thought, you know what? I will just add them to my ephemera box of butterflies and they'll live there. So I'm going to put those. They'll obviously be one of the top elements. So first of all, I wanted to come in and I just wanted to get something on this page just to get myself started because with everything creative it's breaking it's breaking the page isn't it breaking that white page so I'm just going to take these two stamps um obviously a Tim Holtz um this is called Pap Papillon CMS 106 so and I'm going to take some archival black and I'm just going to come in and put stuff down on the page now I'm not looking for perfect I'm trying to never look for perfect, to be honest with you. But what I am looking for is just something that will be buried somewhere in the background. There are going to be layers and layers and layers. You, you know the way I work by now. It's very mixed media work with me. Um, I do tend to put lots of stuff on the page. So just that bit on there. Actually, let's see if I can get a bit of a ghost print off that. I know with everything else that's going to go on this page, there's going to be more than enough here. I think you're going to take some of this script. Um, I'm hoping that having the camera up higher will give you a better view of what I'm doing. Um, I don't know. I'm constantly trying to refine my filming techniques. And thank you for all the compliments about my YouTubes. It seems you love them and I love doing them so we're on a winning tack there, aren't we? So I'm just going to put my ink pad and my ink stamps away a second because I want to add a little bit of background colour to this before I actually get on to the collaging and the sticking and things like that. So um, I pulled in four paints that I quite like the thought of combining. Um, we've got a Peebo, which is... What's this? I think it's just, is it pink or is it rose? It's called Pink Rose. There you go. Um, this is Arteza Terracotta, Deco Art, which is Buttermilk, and Arteza again, which is Turquoise. They're all acrylics. I tend to only work in acrylics and inks, so there's not a huge amount of um, challenges. I just find they work for me. So I'm going to come in. I've got a credit card with me, and I'm just going to come in and put 
some little bits of something on this page. So I'm literally, I would if it would come out. There you go. Literally, oh, I didn't want that much to come out. Never mind, we'll have a bit of a clean up in a second. Just got some of that on there. And I'm just swiping a bit of the colour across here just to give it a bit of a, a background. So that's that one. Let's just quickly clean this off because I know I will end up wearing that. I'm notorious for doing that. Now I'm working from the darker colours to the lighter colours purely because that's just the way my brain works. Um, I don't know, I just do it that way. So just add little bits of colour in here and there. You have seen me do this technique before. I'm absolutely certain of it. So I'm going to come in with the pink. This is a new pink for me, so I'm hoping it's it's a nice pink. I don't mind the colours overlapping each other. I'm trying to get a little bit of colour into that crease there, or into the drawing. Let's just leave that there. And then I'm going to come in with my lightest colour of out of these four, which is the buttermilk, which I just will wipe this off. Where's my damp rag? Okay, this rag looks filthy. It's absolutely clean. It's just stained from use with um, all acrylics and inks. I tend to use a damp cloth instead of using um, wet wipes. Um, just my, my personal choice, trying to do my little bit for the planet as I think most of us are nowadays. Um, there are times when I will still grab for a wet wipe, but today is not one of them. Okay, so I've got all those colours down there. Then I'm going to come in and I've got the white gesso that I used in the first place. Because what I want to do is I'm trying to build depth onto this image. So I'm just move, sorry, I'm saying by my foot and it's getting in my way. So I'm just going to come in, I'm just picking it up on my credit card or my door key or whatever it is. And just putting streaks of white on here just to pull stuff all the way through to the background. So it's not so dominant, but it is there. It's a technique I absolutely love doing is using using a store card or a credit card or a hotel key. Um, probably because it's such an easy cleanup, to be honest with you. Right, I'm liking where that's going. I don't see any issues with that at the moment. Um, we will probably use white acrylic paint as we go along as well. Um, but I think for the time being, a little bit more there. I want that a little more knocked back. Art is never an exact science, and I don't expect it to be. So let's put the lid on that until I need it later. So, well, that's drying off a bit. Let's have a little look at what we're going to be using. Um, now, I kind of already made up my mind to be honest. I like I like this this image, and I've got a feeling it's going to go there. But this was another one I pulled out. Now I love Stamperia rice papers, um, or some people call them wafer paper. I can't remember whether it's wafer paper or not. But this is rice paper to me. I love it. I use it a lot. So I'm keeping this one for another project. Um, I have. This one, which I really like, I used to, I've used this a few times in my work and I absolutely love that one rose and this bud. So that will go on there. And I keep all of the scraps that I have left over as well, because you never know when they're going to be used. And then I'm using this one as well. So I think best thing to do is let's get all the crink and plastic noises out of the way and let's just remove them from their packaging. Okay, everything I stick down today, I'm going to be sticking down with Liquitex Matte Medium Gel or Matte Gel Medium. Um, it's an inexpensive medium. I use it a lot. I found this by following a New Zealand artist called Froyle Davies, and I love her channel. And I noticed it there and found out that I could quite readily get it in my own country. Right, is this dry? It's kind of not yet, but I'm not going to worry about that too much. There's, there's a few other things I need to do. And a little bit of wet paint is never going to stop me, I can assure you. OK, um, we've got the painted layer on. I do want to add some book page. Now, I've got book page here. I want to add some book page. Now, because this is really old book page, I've actually painted this with clear gesso as well. 
for no other reason than that it was just too fragile. I knew if I stuck it down, it would just crumble on me. Um, I've also pulled in my hoop of washi tapes, the ones that have got mainly butterflies and florals on them. Um, if you want to know more about the hoops I use to store them, there is a video on them. I will try and link the video in the description box down in that corner. And if I remember, I will do that for you. If you're going to ask me where I get my washi from, 99% of my washi comes from searching Etsy for them or searching eBay. That and or if I'm away somewhere and I see some in a craft store, I'll pick it up. So know that we've got we've got stuff on the go as well. Right, I think first of all, I'm going to play around with getting some of this um, book page onto my piece of art. And I don't want a huge amount, but I do want bits here or there. And then what I'll do is I'll probably go in with my finger and put some white gesso or white acrylic over the top of it, just so that I've got another layer of interest out there. So... Now, a lot of people ask me, how do I know where to place stuff? I don't. I just do it. Um, I, I very much am a believer of the more you do something, the more instinctual it will become to you. And I think I'm now so used to doing collage and art pieces that I, I a lot of the time I just don't think. I, I just put stuff down. I just get it on the page and and I live I live with the consequences of putting it down there. I think that's probably enough. Now these pieces that are left here I'll keep to one side because they may get added later as another layer or they may actually just go into my scrap box and they can be used for ephemera pieces for junk journaling and stuff like that. So I think I need to get that down. Now um, I'm not sure you can see it on screen but I've got a ceramic tile here and I've got one of these Distress Tim Holtz. I think he calls them a palm brush and um, they come in a set of three and I really love these. I'm um, better than a handled brush to be honest with you. So I'm just going to put some of the matte medium onto my ceramic tile. Now if I have one disadvantage to these you can't get the top off. So if I screw it too much out I can't get it back in the in the tube, so you'll find that I actually am constantly adding bits. I do have a little pot if at the end of a project I've got a lot left over, I will actually just go in and, and put it into a separate pot. And just lay that down, I'm trying to get it as horizontal as it's supposed to be. I'm just going to come over it with my credit card just to make sure that I've smoothed out any bits and pieces of it, any air bubbles underneath it. So that there. So yes, we're we've been quite lucky at the moment. We've got some beautiful weather here in Wales. Um, we've had some horrible weather here in Wales recently, but we we seem to be having the last bit of summer, I think. Uh, we did have a really I want to say it's about two weeks, maybe three weeks of extremely hot weather here in Britain, which is beyond what we normally have. Um, the downside of that was we now have water shortages in parts of the country. So unfortunately, some people are on hosepipe bans. And the problem with that is that we, we're just not, we're not set up for extremes of weather here in the UK. Uh, we don't seem to deal well with a lot of snow. We don't deal well with a lot of ice. <laughs> it's, and believe me, I've lived in other parts of the world where, where a leaf on the track would not stop the trains, let it put it that way. But when we have leaves on the track here in Britain, yeah, the trains stop. I don't get that. So right, we've got that put down. There you go. So that's one layer down. Now I think I want to put some of the washi down, um, but not huge pieces of it now. This washi is like a tape. It's got a background to it. I want to be a little careful as to what colours I use. I think I'm going to use these. So let me just take my little bit of washi off the washi. Pull this out. And just tear a strip of those. And I'm going to put my little bit of washi back on here because if there's one disadvantage of using the washi that's got a backing on it, it's that it just comes unspooled 
as you're um, as you're working. I thought there were pink, pink butterflies on one of these. Let me just have a little look under here. Yeah, there are pink butterflies. Not that I want to be too married to the colour pink, but I would like to have some consistency across the board, should we say. Let me just wrap that round there. Sorry about this, just being a little fumble fingered here, should I say. Right, that's that washing out the way. So what do I want to do with these? I think I quite like things in threes, as a lot of us do. So let's tear this into three strips. Now, as with anything that's got a sticky back to it, I'm going to have a problem because I know I can never get the backs off things. Um, and thank you to all of you who have given me umpteen different tips on how to do it. The only trouble is they don't seem to work for me. Struggle is real, people. The struggle is real. OK, and that's only one of three. Now, I know it's going to stick down, but I am going to put just a little bit of the matte medium under it as well, just to secure it in place. Just to make sure that it is well and truly down and it's becoming one of the layers. Right, let's see if I can make you suffer through that again, shall we? Or I might, if I don't get this off reasonably quickly. We might just pause the video and I'll go and get my roll of tape, which is how I normally do this. I think the problem is I just don't have fingernails. Um, well, I do have fingernails, obviously I have fingernails, but I, I don't keep longish fingernails. Um, and as I said, I've tried so many of your suggestions and thank you for them. But it just it's a technique, I think. And I just I just don't I don't do it. It just doesn't doesn't work for me no matter what I do. I really struggle getting the backs off stuff to the point now where when I create labels, unless they're like an Avery label or a label on a label sheet, I tend to just print my labels now onto regular paper cut them out and just stick them on with a print stick because I've got to the point where the frustration level is just a little bit more than I'm willing to handle. Right, so I've got those in three different areas. Not that they have to be in three different areas, but as I said, I like to put them in three different areas. Right, so those are going to be secured down. They didn't ripple, which I'm quite pleased about because I thought maybe they might ripple, but they didn't ripple, so we're loving that. So, right, let's have a little bit of a think. Let's just have a little bit of a wipe up there as well. Just uh, um, I've only got these sheets down, by the way, so that any glue or paint doesn't go onto any of the pages behind them. So, right, we've got that in there. Um, I think I would like to add a little bit of white now. Where's the white gone? Right, I've just got some Arteza white. And I've got just some water in here and I'm just going to gently spritz my pages because I want to be able to add the white and have it move around. So and if the page is wet, it, it will do that quite nicely. As I said, I don't know rhyme or reason why why I do what I do. I'm purely going by gut instinct on here. I'm just blending stuff into a background, give, giving all of that layer technique stuff. I want to try and keep this page quite light, which is probably another reason why um, I want to keep adding lighter colours to it. I don't mind if I cover up part of the butterflies. That again adds to the to the depth, the, the visual illusion that there is more more depth to this image than there actually is. So right. Um, there's a little bit along there. I'm not I'm not loving this harsh line. Let's get rid of that harsh line. And if you ever do do too much, you can always go in with a cloth and just dab back a bit with a damp cloth and then just lift some of it back off again. I'm quite happy with where this is. 
So, yep, fine. So, let's get a little bit of cleanup. Now, I do know that I want to use these rice papers, but I know I don't want to use them as complete and utter sheets. I want to take pieces out of them, and I think now is the time to take them out. So I'm going to push this up to the top of my desk, which is probably off screen for you, or mostly, and I'm going to come in now. I could tear this by hand, okay? I could come in and I can tear it. However, I'm going to do the technique a lot of people like doing, which is I'm using a water brush. It doesn't have to be a water brush. It could just be a brush and water, if that makes sense. And all you do is you just roughly paint around the edges of the rice paper. And what it will do is it will start to dissolve part of the rice paper. So I'm just going to take this up here. And what it will do is it means it will actually tear for you. It will tear quite nicely. Now, another reason I like doing this is rice paper does have some seriously thick fibers in it sometimes which you have to cut so if you're going to tear it apart like this just be a little cautious that you might also come up against um, a barrier of a fiber that may need to be cut um actually i want to keep that but let's take that bit down there i can always take more off can't really add more on unless I'm doing it as I'm sticking it down on the art piece. Um, I think I'd quite like to keep that butterfly only because we've been doing a butterfly theme. I don't really want that saying I can keep it for another day so working my way around. I'm just pressing my finger down so when I'm pulling away the the rice paper is unlikely to tear in a direction I don't want it to tear. Sorry, just gone really quiet then. Just focusing, trying in my mind to work out how I want the eventual image to look. I mean, to be honest with you, I could just stick the entire image down and I'd be more than happy because Stamperia has absolutely wonderful um, rice papers. If there's anything I was ever going to hoard, it's probably my rice papers from Stamperia. I also like their paper pads as well, as you probably already know if you follow me. Now, I do have a sharp corner here. And until I actually put it on my page and look at it, I don't know whether I'm going to keep that sharp corner. So let's just pull back in my art germ again and get it recentered. Now, the thing is, do I want that look on the page? Right, so that tells me that it's going to be quite dominant. I'd quite like to maybe... Hmm... I think I'd like to take this bit off here and I think I will take this bit off here because then that gives me options. So let's slide that back out of everyone's way again. So, and it is purely, I don't want to say it's guesswork, it is purely just working your way through it to find out what works and what doesn't for you in your final composition. So... I mean, just because this piece isn't in the same relationship as this on the page doesn't mean that this little piece may not end up somewhere else on the composition. So, right, I need to come in and take a lot of this off. I'm going to try and come in reasonably close to this rose here so that this brown piece here isn't as dominant. Um, the reason I keep rubbing it on the back of my hand is I don't want to squeeze my water brush directly over the image because the way these work, if you squeeze, they, they tend to bubble out some of the moisture in them, the water in them, and I don't really want to have a huge amount of water pouring over the bit that I'm going to use. I'm going to take that butt off there as well 
just to shorten the whole piece. Let's see what we're up to with this. Maybe you give it more water there. Okay, so that's taken that down. Let's see, let's take that little bit out of there. So that's taken that down quite considerably. Let's audition that back in here again. Are you in shop? Yes, you are. I'm now wondering whether I want to take this out of here because I could take that out, flip it around and put it there. And I think, you guessed it, I'm going to. So... Obviously, fast forward anything you think you want to fast forward, people. Um, I will not be offended and never am offended if you fast forward, because it could be that you're watching something and these techniques are not new to you, but you still want to watch. So feel free to fast forward. I try not to fast forward my footage in my videos unless I absolutely have to which I don't very often. I'm, I'm reasonably careful about editing stuff out so that I don't have to fast forward. Because I don't know about you, but I find it quite jarring if I'm watching a video and then all of a sudden it goes into fast forward mode. Right, I know those are going to work, so I'm just going to leave those to one side for a second. I do have this, and I want this on this side of the page, on the left hand side of the page. And I also quite like this. Now, I'm not going to use the water brush this time. I'm literally going to tear this. So I'm going to come in and just tear it. If you keep your fingers pinching where you want the tear to go, it usually tears quite easily. Um, don't worry if you think, oh, I'm creasing up the rice paper. Um, when you wet this down, this rice paper will flatten itself back out if you smooth it. And also a lot of this will just dissolve into the background. So, take that out of there. And then I wanted this piece as well. Now I may have too many pieces on here. Um, as I said, I can always ha use the options. I can always use the scraps somewhere else should I need to. But I think that lives for another day. I do have that one little bird and piece, if there's a piece to put it in, which not absolutely necessary. So let's bring this in again. Right, we're back in shot. So my thinking is, I'd quite like to pop that up there. That position somehow up there. I quite like the idea of this going here and then this could potentially come in down here so somewhere. I'm just going to come in and put this piece down first. I need some more of this. Now another reason I really like using rice paper is the fact that it just almost dissolves into the background once it's in place. Um, so therefore you get all of this beautiful detail without it looking like you've got a ton of work on the page. Um, this could also be done with napkins, by the way, guys. Just, that feels like it's just a little bit too high. There you go. I'm just going to work my way across with the brush trying to not get wrinkles in it. Right, are you still in shot? You are still in shot. I'm just going to put a little bit of a thin coat of the medium over the top. I don't want to brush this too much. Um, it's not really likely to tear um, like tissue paper, um, like tissue or like a napkin unless you overwork it so right we've got this other piece here now i'm looking at this i think i want to take this edge away from here just so i've got a little bit less i don't mind the corner there because it gives me a way of almost registering it 
I'm going to turn my book to one side so I can more easily come into this area. And that's another thing, guys. If you're working, don't think you have to keep your book or your canvas or the project in the correct orientation. I know I may be speaking to the choir here or talking to the converted, but a lot of people I see working keep their piece of art in the same orientation all of the time. Move it, guys. Make, make it comfortable for you. Um, art should be comfortable to do. Um, if it's uncomfortable to create, you're probably going to be unhappy with your work afterwards. Now, I do have the odd air bubble um, on this page, and it's underneath all of the layers of paper and book. I don't mind that because I do know through experience it's going to dry out and it's going to go smooth again on me. So I'm not going to kill myself over that. So let's move that back around this way. Are we in shot? We are in shot. I'm doing well today staying in shot. Right, I'm just wiping up under the pages because I don't want things, even though these are non-stick mats, I can assure you the medium will probably stick to them. So I'm liking the way this is going. Um, probably going to want to blend some white into this again. So just take a little bit of the white acrylic. Oh, it's a nice goober on the top of it. Take a little bit more of the white acrylic and just work it just so I've got little bits here and there. Just so there are no stark lines. There's no areas where it looks like it's just been stuck on. I'm just trying to blend things in so that we're once again creating those, the illusion of those layers. I tend to dab more than rub because it adds another interesting texture as well. It's almost like, it's almost like a wallpapery texture once I dab it. And same on this side. A little bit down there. Now I've almost lost all the butterflies there. Does that bother me? No, it doesn't. Because the thing is that I put them on there. I thought they were going to be showing. They're not showing anymore. Does that bother me? No, because it's just another one of the layers. If you really look at this piece, you will see there's butterfly behind there. It doesn't matter that it's fully visible or not. So I very often get asked when I do collage, well, why did you bother doing that? You were covering it up anyway. I didn't know I was going to cover it up. Um, as I create pieces, I don't always know where things are going to go. I, I don't want my artwork to be regulated or planned in such a way that I lose, I lose the creativity to be able to go, no, I'm just going to put that over there. I'm not going to put that there. I'm just going to put it. I don't like the fact that I could potentially be held to a decision that for my gut may be the wrong decision. I'll just give that a little bit of a blot. So I like where this is going. Now I've got the roses to go on next. Or so I think. But I just want to take a second to have a look at this and go, right, what am I losing? What am I liking? What do I want to keep? Now it is relatively damp still, so let's just take some of the spare pieces of rice paper out of my way because otherwise I'm going to have them everywhere. Okay, I think at this point, let's pull in these, not because they're going to be used just yet, but because this is a good time to actually look at them. Okay, pink is going to be, I think, the wrong colour. It's too bright of a pink. I think I saw that they've got lighter coloured pink in here pink with white in them. Let's see if I can find some of them. Yeah, that's just, no, that, this just feels wrong, this colour pink for me. It's just a bit too cutesy, especially when you consider the roses are going to be pink. Um, and those who know me know that pink isn't my most favourite colour. Um, I've tried embracing it. It doesn't always work for me. Um, teal, I'm still quite happy about the teal image, to be honest. Um, I'm pretty much drawn to this colour, though, which is almost like a cream colour. And it could be that there's going to be more than one butterfly on this page. I don't know. I mean, 
I'm actually loving that. To me at the moment, that's pretty much the winner on the block. Um, although we'll see once I've put all of the other colour in. And then we've got, as I said, the teal or the turquoise ones. Which, again, there's an array of sizes, so I can play around with these a bit. But that's a pretty spectacular butterfly. So I could have put that right in the middle, couldn't I? That's an idea. Okay, I'm going to think on that. Think on that while I'm composing the rest of it. Mulling things over in my mind is never a bad thing for me. So, right, where are we up to? It's still a little bit damp, but I think I can get away with what I'm about to do. So, I'm going to go back in now, and I'm going to do a little bit more stamping on here with the black, and this again. Um, actually, do I want a different... I think I want a different script stamp. Right, still with Tim Holtz. Um, this was Ledger Script CM... S241. They're, they're this part of the same one. I always have to cut my um, stamps in half because I end up putting them in these things. I'm going to use this one here just to overlay some script on the top of areas of this. Remember, nothing is meant to be solid. Nothing is meant to be perfect. Just giving that little bit of layering just just layer upon layer upon layer that's all i'm trying to do i'm thinking as i go along to will i in the future need to put something around the edges of this i could well need to and get a bit in there i'll be quite happy and maybe a little bit down there now i've got some acrylic on there i'm just going to take my damp cloth and give it a bit of a rub just to take it out. I don't mind a build up of ink, but I don't want paint in there because the paint will actually block up the detail. I could throw this in a bowl of water, but I don't think I need to at this moment in time. I've added little bits and that's enough for the moment. If there's one thing I'm, I'm bad at, it's knowing when to stop. And I could get quite carried away sticking stamped areas on here. So again, just hauling back a bit, just going, no, 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 I think we've got enough. So, right, we're getting to the point now where I need to make some decisions. I originally wanted this up in that corner. Well, it would work equally as well there. This... See, I quite like that up there. Well, I quite like that. There's, I don't mind that down there. It, it's beginning to be... I do like it, but I'm suddenly feeling, is it too dominant for this page? So I've got this little piece here that... could kind of work, but it looks like too many butterflies for me. If I was just to put this one on here... See, that is quite nice down there. Actually, that might work better if I angle it in that direction. I think so. Right. Let's see if I can just roughly tear this into straight lines, or 90 degree at least. Again, I'm losing some of the butterflies underneath. I don't mind that. It's a layer. Now, I'm going to have to probably trim this after I've stuck it down. Or maybe I won't if I get it relatively okay. So, yes, I'm thinking about the edges of the pages. I'm probably going to have to come in and give them some sort of kind of antiquing or shading. And I need to make my mind up. Will it be with paint or will it be with a distress ink? Um, not hundred certain about that. So I just just need to think on that for a little while, should we say? Right, if I pop that relatively close to the top, and the reason I bought that up is because 
if there is going to be something going around the edges of these pages, then I don't have to worry about anything that sticks over the sides. Just a little bit of over the top. Now this one down here, do I, is this too predictable? Curiouser and curiouser. I'm wondering whether I can compose something with this. I don't think I want to, to be honest. I'm, I'm liking this bit and I want to use it, but I'm wanting to use it purely because I've got it. Actually, that would work. That would kind of work. Let's see if I can just tear this a little bit. So it's not such an absolute straight line. Let's put that bit over there. Get off my fingers, there you go. And I think if that was added in there, how much of that's going to be shown? I think I need to tear a little bit more. I think I'm going to do that. At the end of the day, it's paper, ink and my time. Well, it's not even ink, because it's paper glue in my time. Okay, that merged in reasonably well. I'll have to come in afterwards and just trim that edge off. That doesn't bother me. Right. Let's just... Run that up there a second. So I've got the basis of my page, but I seem to be focusing on this side, not this side. So I need to come across here now. Now, these to me look like they're definitely vertical flowers. That's not going to be used. The question is, is it too much? Is it not too much? This is sort of I won't say bothering me, but there's something about this area here that needs a something. And I'm wondering whether I should introduce a piece of this into that area. And I think I might just do that. So just, I didn't want to add more stamping because the stamping would have been too dark. Um, and if I'd have changed it to maybe a coffee coloured ink or maybe a, a brown or vintage photo or something like that, I think it would have looked peculiar. I think that's what that might need there. So let's give this a coating of this. I think that's better. Still undecided about this. Hmm, I bet you're all screaming something at me, aren't you? Just trying to give it a little bit of thought as to what else would be good on this page. Just trying to go through my thought process as you all asked me to. Um, this needs something down here. To me, that it's obvious it needs something down there. Maybe this isn't the right piece. I'm kind of being drawn back to this. And I'm wondering whether... That's kind of what it needs in that corner. I'm going to take this out and have a little play. After all, I did pull these three out to be used, so... So I reckon if I put that down there... So I need to come down here slightly. 
I'm living life on the edge here. Me trying to tear a straight line, not a good idea. I think I want to go as far as French Rue Mission de France. I believe that's what that says. It doesn't want to be torn this direction, I can tell you. I could use my water pen, but you know me, I'm not going to. So. And trim that off afterwards. The only thing that slightly bothers me, and it's something I could, could easily rectify, is I don't have music anywhere else on the page. Um, not that I have to have music anywhere else on the page. But there's music on this and I'm wondering whether I then need to add it somewhere else. I think I need to come further down. I'll try and tear this French phrase off because I might just add it somewhere else. Let's just leave that one on the side there, just so it reminds me I was thinking of that. Yep, I think we're going to do it. I'm going to put that down there. It's it's calling me to do it. So I'm just going to pop that down there. Well, if anyone's seen this on my arm, by the way, I, I just caught myself on the bathroom door handle and cut myself. So I'm not really in any great danger. I just happened to have caught myself on the bathroom door. So there you go. That's what happens when you're being distracted or in a rush, which I think I was this morning. So I do have this piece, which I do quite like this piece. And as you know, I like to add words into things. I think I'm going to just pop that up there because I feel that needs something. Oh, it doesn't need the bit on there though. Look okay, I can't see it looks straight. It's very difficult because I can't look directly down on my piece because I've got the camera immediately above me. So right, we've got all this in. Um, I'm going to try and trim this bit off. Or is it still going to be too wet? It's not bad. It wasn't the easiest thing, but it was okay. Right. Um, I think I now need to start playing with what I'm doing with the butterflies before I consider what I've got down here done or not done. Um, because I'm unsure. And I, the composition, I need to see the whole thing before I believe it's done or not. So I really am liking this butterfly. And I think right in the middle would be wonderful. Is this the biggest butterfly there is? This is the question is, do I want that colour? Or do I want that colour? For me, I think it's going to have to be this one. And I don't normally stick stuff directly in the middle. But that kind of feels right. I do wish it was this size though. Was that the biggest butterfly in here? Oh, there's another type of big butterfly. No. Nope. That's I think that's that's got to be it. I just had a thought. I have been known to layer butterflies before. No, I think that's the one. 
Right, don't mess around anymore, Griffiths. You know what you want. So I think I'm going to... I don't particularly want to fold this. I think I'm going to cut it directly down the middle and glue it in as two different pieces. And that way I will get a better chance of lining them up when they're in place than trying to get the fold in the middle. So having a look now, I've got, that's nice, that's nice. This is slightly bothering me, that line. If these are in place, that's a bit empty. What would I put there instead is the question. I don't really want to put more flowers. If I put more flowers, it's just going to, it's just going to become weird. I could put um, more book page in. I do have this little something, sometimes you win, sometimes you learn. I wonder. There's always the danger of doing too much when you do something like this. And I always try to be very conscious of it. Half time I fail and I do it anyway. So that just by there might just be enough to fill that gap in for me. to bend these slightly because there's the curve of the book to decide on. Now, you're, I'm probably going to get comments of why didn't I fussy cut this bit out. Um, I want the support of the whole thing down there. So I think if I do those, that will marry up nicely in there. Decisions, decisions. I mean, I could come in and stencil something. But again, I'm not sure whether that wouldn't just be a little touch of overkill. Now, a lot of this is going to dry clearer in that it's not going to be as, I don't want to say the word foggy, but because I've got... Um, matte medium on top the matte medium needs time to actually dry clear i think i just need to put these down because trying to hum and ha about what they're going to look like what it's all going to look like i i can't do it until i can see it maybe just down a little bit there These are, are quite thin, so I'm, I'm not hugely worried about these adding bulk to my spine. Let's just get a little bit more matte medium under that. I'm not sure I have enough matte medium under that wing. So I think I just want to give that a good coat of matte medium, just because, as I said, it will knock the metallic out of this a little bit for me. I'm not sure that I'm not done, guys. I still need to work out what to do around the edges. My gut instinct is to do brown. I'm looking at this thinking that the white is maybe a bit too white and they do have this buttermilk colour that I might just try and put the odd little bit of it in. Just see how this... works with a bit of a... I don't mind that. I 
I mean, I do have some chalk paint as well, which I could potentially put on here, but I'm not sure chalk is the right, for me it's the right um, texture, but I think it'll be the wrong image for this. And this, this dabbing action is definitely giving it more of a, almost an oldie wall type of look to it. A little bit across here as well, so that can get pushed back into the background. little bit more down there. So I think I want to put brown around the outside of this. Now, the question is, do I use ink? Do I use paint? Um, not 100% certain. Um, this is one of those issues that I wish I was on the live and I could actually just ask you guys outright. Do a bit of paint over that, that will just move it around a little bit and blend blend that paint in just a little bit more. I do think I'm done. I think what I'm going to do is I want to pause you for a couple of minutes or a couple of seconds it'll be for you but it'll be a couple of minutes for me and I just want to come in and give it a blast with a hairdryer so I can see how vibrant things are and then decide whether it's going to be ink whether it's going to be paint I'm not sure to bring those edges in I've got a feeling I'm going to use um, vintage photo on it um, because that's kind of I don't have walnut which would be the other color I'd probably use so I'm going to put you on pause for two seconds guys and then I'll bring you back when this is dry so the pages have dried quite a bit now they're not fully dry but that's okay with me they're dry enough for me to handle now um, I'm still a little, I don't know what to do next syndrome, but I did pull out, I've got this Sienna ink um, by Colorex and PBO, and I really think I'm going to use that and a sponge and put some brownness, at least in the corners, if not anywhere else. So I'm just going to tip this a little bit, and I don't have a huge amount of this, so um, just put some on the sponge, and this is purely just a sponge that... I bought in um, my local cosmetic store and I've cut it into pieces and what I want to do is I want to get this on here and then I'm just gonna I need another excuse my shoulder I'm running out of water there you go I just want to get that on there so that it's kind of moving around a bit um, just while I'm thinking about the next stages, I just want to frame this out a bit. A little bit up there as well. I don't want this to look too regimented, but I do feel it needs... something. Now I'm just going to come in and I'm going to blot quite a bit of that out so that I don't end up having huge swathes of brownness happening all over the place. Let's take that out the middle of that spine or it'll leak through to another page. 
and I think that's that's sort of given it the effect I was looking at. A little bit here and there. Isn't it funny? I can't actually tell you why I'm doing what I'm doing because a lot of it is purely instinctual. And I think it harkens back to what I said earlier on. And that is, um, the more you do, the more you'll do it right. Not that there's anything wrong, but the more you do, the more chance you've got of actually going, you know what, I need to do that, or I need to do that. So just tap that on, take some of that off. Okay, that's definitely going in the direction I want. This is a bit too heavy over here for me. See if I can pull some of that back off there. And yet, I would quite like that a little darker in that corner. That's better, I think. Now there is one more thing I think I want to do to this. And I know it's probably going to sound a bit predictable to some people. However, I quite like the idea of it. Is I want to put some splatters on this page. And I think I want to do them in black um, acrylic. Just, just little bits, just here or there. So let me just put this to one side, just a touch of that left. But you know what, as long as there's some in the pot, there's some in the pot. Right, where's my black Mars gone? There's black Mars. Now I've still got a little bit of the ink on here, so instead of watering it down, um, watering my black down, I think I'm just going to use the ink to water it down. I do need to think, however, as to what I'm going to splatter it with. literally going to get right that's quite a stiffish a stiffish a stiff brush I did have a toothbrush somewhere but I don't know where I put it I have no idea where I put the toothbrush so, right we're going to do it with this so I'm going to add a little bit of black to this don't need a huge amount because I don't want it to be massively dark I also want to come in and mask off my butterfly wings just just randomly I'm never going to get the the matting perfect for them but if I've just got bits then I'm probably going to be able to protect um, the cream areas of the butterfly you'd be surprised where this stuff goes if you're not careful just just mix that in I'm going to have to add some water to that. That's, that's way, way, way too wet. Right, let's just take some of the excess off there. I just have stuff everywhere when I do this. Right. It's probably going to end up all over my fingers, but... As I said, I normally do this with a toothbrush. I've got an old toothbrush, it's obviously not my my personal toothbrush, that would just be firstly unhygienic and I don't want my teeth to look black. Okay, enough is enough Griffiths, stop. So, right, I'm going to have to stop for two seconds now because obviously I'm covered in stuff. I'm going to take this off, I'm going to clean this up, I'll be back in two seconds guys. So here we are, all nice and finished. It's not 100% dry, I can feel by the coolness of the underside of the pages, but it's dry enough for me to say that it's actually finished. Um, I could keep going and putting more and more stuff in here, and if you do that, you get to the point where it just looks like a hot mess and the eye never knows where to look. Um, quite like it. Um, these were an interesting find. I've never had butterflies that big before but I mean it was a good find I will probably use them again I was a little bit 
worried that they, the image might move when it got wet, but it actually didn't. I was quite happy with that. So, um, so I think that's pretty much it, guys. So hopefully you like that one from me. It was a bit different to what I normally do. It didn't really have a memory or a story behind it. It was just, it was one of those days when I just wanted to create something. So hopefully you enjoyed that. Um, and it's goodbye from me. So I'm Kerry the Crafter. That's C-E-R-I the Crafter. Until next time. Bye-bye now.